So the main topics that we are discussing tonight is qualifications for dating and uh, one qualification is prerequisites and the other one that we're going to discuss tonight is scriptural goals for dating. So in the Bible there's a lot of principles and words written that will guide us and lead us into a fruitful marriage afterwards. So in establishing a scriptural set of dating standards, uh, we'll have this on the on the uh, on the Bible about these principles. And uh, number one is date only Christians. Date only Christians. It's not there yet, but you cannot date a non Christian unbeliever individual. It's bad. <laughs> Why is it bad? Because the scripture says so. 2 Corinthians 6.14 Let's If you have your Bibles with you you can go there to 2 Corinthians 6.14 It says, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Do not make mismated alliances with them or come under a different yoke with them. Inconsistent with your faith. I'm reading in the Amplified Version. So if they are not aligned with your faith, forget about it. They are a handsome devil. <laughs> and a beautiful demon. <laughs> so, for what? Partnership have right living and right standing with God with iniquity and lawlessness. No standing at all. No partnership at all. Or how can light have fellowship with darkness? No fellowship at all. We go there and witness to them. We make them make friends with them, but we don't have that kind of relationship that will lead to marriage with them. So we invite them to church, we have a Bible study with them, but we don't hang around them for a long time and have a relationship with them, date them, and have a, a closer relationship with them that will lead to marriage. No. And in verse 15, it says, what harmony can there be between Christ and Belial, the devil? So, you could read between the lines that the, the people in the world, outside the church, they are sinners. They are the children of Satan, the devil. Wow, that's bad, isn't it? And it's not my word, Jesus said it himself. So how can you make, you know, an alliance with them? Because that's what the scripture said. Or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? And if you continue reading the scriptures, you cannot even establish an agreement. Business with an unbeliever? I don't think so. Because they have a different set of rules. And their minds, while we have a different kind of standards. Amos 3 and 3. Let's take a look at the uh, scriptures of Amos 3, chapter 3 and verse 3. Do two walk together except they make an appointment and have agreed. So the appointment and the agreement there is not just, you know, we'll, we'll uh, have some 
dinner or, or you know. It's just not as simple as that. The agreement there is you have an intention of make a date. Making a date. So can two walk together except they be agreed? So date only a Christian. Date only a daughter and a son of God. You are a daughter and a son of God. You cannot afford to marry a, um, a, a person with a non-royal blood. You know, the royal uh, family in London, they can only marry royal blood, but now they have changed the rules. They compromised. Because they could not stop these younger generations to go out and choose. But before, in the 18th century and earlier, they cannot marry any commoners. They should marry a noble blood. In other words, it was even in the human point of view that they could not marry outside of the family. We are the family of God. So boys and girls, don't take a look. Don't have a second look with the girl or the boy outside. You can witness to them. Witness to them about this salvation. Bring them to church and let them grow. And then uh, by the time they grow and they uh, reestablish in the church, you can say, can I, can I ask you for a, a coffee or something? <laughs> uh, you start. <laughs> That's how it is. That's the best way. Number two, have a compatible goals. God's goals for your life should be compatible with God's goals for his or her life. It should not be his or her goal is to build him a career in the world and amass so much wealth and honor and fame. And your goal is just to be in the church and witness and, you know, praise God and worship God and have a holiness standards in your life. That's your goal, be in heaven someday. But his or her goal is different. He's got a worldly goal. He could step on anybody's toes just to make his name, his name be above there. You know, he, he has a different goal in life. Even if it's a noble goal, yet it's not a godlike goal. It's not a Christian goal. You should help the other develop his or her Christian maturity. So help compatible compatible goals if you have if you are now dating somebody in the church let your goal be compatible and there are so many things you can think in the church to develop and that will make your goal your your aim your objective uh, your objective shall we say i'm going to finish bible school and encourage your, your friend, your dating partner. said, let's finish Bible school together. You know? And do not start Bible school and then, oh, I cannot finish it. Oh, I'm busy. Oh, man, where's your commitment? <laughs> you have to make, to be committed and finish Bible school. You should build its other's desire and goal. And she always say you would like to be uh, a Sunday school teacher. That's your goal. And you can do it. Yeah. And if your partner or your, your dating partner is having a different kind of ministry, but you develop its other's ministry. Because it's geared toward the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the same. Your goal is the same, to reach out for the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 14, 19, reading from the Living Bible. In this way, aim for harmony in the church and try to build each other up. 
So if you are going to read it in the Amplified Version, Romans 14, 19, So let us then definitely aim for and eagerly pursue what makes for harmony and for mutual upbuilding, edification and development of one another. Wow, what a beautiful aim. Harmony, try to build each other up. So that's your goal, comparable goals. Another one in Colossians 1.28. Whom we preach warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. So we are now your brother's keeper. Iron sharpened iron. You are trying to build up your dating partner in serving the Lord Jesus Christ in the church. You are not belittling and putting down your dating partner or even your brother and sister in the church. You are not going to say, oh, he's no good, I'm good. <laughs> no, you can't do that. You build him up. You build her up. Yeah. She's sometimes, um, you know, a silly, but she's good. <laughs> she gets and silly mistakes, but you know, there is something in her or him got the potential. Do you develop that potential? In a lot of ways. So, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom, present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. You present everyone. So that's have a comparable goal. Next one is maintain acceptable behavior. Your behavior with other persons should be acceptable by God's standards. So, you are not fighting each other all the time. You are not throwing rubbish to another person. That's not acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just stressing the obvious, you know. <laughs> Behavior which can be acceptable according to God's standards. See 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians 4. Verses 3 to 8. Let's see. For this is the will of God that you should be consecrated, separated, and set apart for pure, unholy living. So the will of God is for us to have the pure, holy living. That you should abstain and shrink from all sexual vice. So make yourself clean. Make yourself, you know, according to the holiness standard written in the Bible. In verse 4, that each one of you should know how to possess, control, manage his own body in consecration, purity separated from things, profane and honor. So you are able to conduct yourselves, control yourselves, manage your own body in terms of purity. Consecration, separated from profane. Not to be used in the passion of lust like the heathen who are ignorant of the true God and have no knowledge of his will. He's talking about now people outside the church. They're unbelievers, heathen, worldly people. Verse 6, that no man transgress and overreach his brother and defraud him in, in this matter or defraud his brother in business. So there's not a acceptable behavior, defrauding a brother or sister. So if you have something in terms of whatever transactions you have with a brother or sister, make it open, honest, and sincere. Don't defraud. For the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we have already warned you solemnly and told you plainly. For God has not called us to impurity, 
but, con but to con consecration to dedicate ourselves to the most thoroughly purity. For the most thorough purity. So there you go. Behavior acceptable in the eyes of God. Psalms 19 and verse 14, it says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Whatever comes out of your mouth should be acceptable. I know and it's not easy, but we have to do it. We have to do it. We have to um, cultivate that kind of behavior. Now, we have our, our own um, attitude sometimes that we have been brought since, you know, we've been in the world. Uh, but because not, most, not all of us are born in the church, so have been cultivated by the things that we have been growing up while we are in the world. And we have adopted and developed those attitudes. And when we are born again, we still have this, those kinds of attitudes. So we have to get rid of it. So we have to force ourselves. Huh? Sometimes if you are being startled or, or you know, some, something happened accidentally, you, you, you blurt out some kind of bad words. I've heard it so many times from saints. <laughs> Somebody fall on the table. Ay! <laughs> and it's not good. It's not acceptable. So try to get rid of it because it's not acceptable in the sight of the Lord, my strength, my redeemer. The meditation of your heart. You meditate to, you know, to do something bad. And the enemy is putting that in your mind. We don't escape those kinds of thoughts. Almost every one of us, including me, are being bombarded by evil thoughts of the enemy. And we don't meditate on that. We just immediately cast down those evil imaginations and thoughts. After you have gone... Uh, um, rebuke it in Jesus' name and you read the word and you meditate in the word when you are free sometimes shoo, went back again man doesn't stop but we have to you know, really be an overcomer we have to do it again rebuke it put our minds with good things in Philippians 4 8 because the enemy is always there Again, in 1 Timothy 5 and 2, treat the elder women as mothers, the younger sisters, with all purity. So here you go. Acceptable behavior. You treat your elder women as mothers. It's been a, a culture in Australia that they call their mother on the first name. Philippines doesn't work that way. I don't think so with God's people. You just say to your mom, Hey, Susan. <laughs> you know, if we could call her mom, <laughs> it would be good. Or grandma. Your grandmother will just call him, Hey, Paulin. <laughs> That's bad, isn't it? Call him Lula Pau. <laughs> so you know, we treat our elders with respect and we could if, if we could be it, if it be possible we could call its brothers and sisters in the church and that would be good I know that you know, it's rampant even in other churches you just call brother or sister by the first name and some of the pastors condone it. No, call me by my first name. And I, don't, I, don't, I don't want you to call me sister because they thought I'm a nun. You're not a nun. <laughs> but they're afraid of that. They're scared of that. I don't know. They're ashamed. I don't know. But I'd rather call you brother or sister wherever you are. Whenever it is. Brother. Sister. 
or, or, or uh, it's now coming on in these days, we call each other, bro, hi, bro. <laughs> but, you know, we are trying to assimilate with what the world is doing. So let's try to distinguish ourselves as ro as holy Roman, not Roman, uh, uh, royal, sorry, royal blood. <laughs> I think in, in Buckingham Palace, they call us noblemen, sir, lord, um, how about the ladies, lady? That's what they, 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 they address people like that. I know we, we could no, we could not deviate from what the Bible has been telling us. The church is having a, a time frame of 2,000 years. What the culture of the first year should be the same with the last. We should not deviate from it because just because of the worldly things, the Hollywood style, we don't, we don't deviate from it. We still respect each other. We call each other brothers and sisters, pastor, or, or you know, elder. And the other one in uh, in goals in dating dating standards is keep the golden rule. <laughs> What's the golden rule? Do unto others. As you would like others to do unto you. That's what it is. No? That's what's been written in Matthew 7, 12. He said, Therefore all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. So we call that the golden rule. Those who have the gold rules. <laughs> No, not exactly. So, do unto others as you would like others to do unto you. It's just very plain, but sometimes we don't do it. Okay, here's a little explanation about dating standard. When a boy and a girl park and kiss each other, this is what happens. Arousing their passions, they embark on the road that leads to fornication. They should remember that several other people are involved. When you do this act that the Word of God doesn't allow you to do, People can be affected. There are people involved. Don't think that you are the only two are involved. And deeply concerned about what they do. The girl has a father and mother who love her dearly. And would be grieved if they knew their daughter was so close to fornication and possible pregnancy. The girl has a brother, young man. Are you treating that Christian brother right? Are you willing for others to treat your sister as you are treating another man's sister? When you have daughters of your own, will you want them treated as you are treating someone else's daughter? Another fact of importance, that girl will someday be a wife. If you take liberties with the girl, someone else is to marry. When you would not want others to take liberties with your future bride, then you are not keeping the golden rule. That's why we don't do things like that. Because we're preserving. If you don't agree with each other and then you separate other men or other 
women will marry or well, you're cleaning your conscience and then they will enjoy their married life you see if you touch her you, you've been involved in that and that somebody else marry her marry him man that's bad You are being unfair. And young woman, you should keep the golden rule too. Don't do with someone else future, else's future husband what you would not want them to do with your future husband. Man. <laughs> so... We are not being taught thoroughly when we were in the world. We just do things because we like them. We feel good. And she feels good. But not according to the word of God. So there you go. Keep the golden rule. Next one. Promote Christ's honoring activities. Your activities should be centered upon those things which will honor and glorify the Lord. Activities. That's why young people activities should be really be uh, looked into properly so that the activities will glorify and honor God. Or if you are dating somebody, your activity should be honorable, and give glory to God. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether therefore you eat, you go to a restaurant and you eat, no. be honorable, give glory to God. You drink, don't drink beer, <laughs> whiskey, <laughs> Or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Do all to the glory of God. It's not only in eating and drinking, but whatever your activity is. And in the world, you could think of so many activities. Especially with your girlfriend and boyfriend. You can think of so many things. But not with the Bible standard. Your activity should be governed what the Bible says. So if it doesn't written explicitly in the Bible, see to it that what you're doing will honor and glorify God. Do not have an activity going to a tattoo parlor and it's, it's what Jesus loves me, you know, and yours too. It's bad activity. Doesn't glorify God. <laughs> so many activities. That's one of those that I could think. <laughs> Man. Can you think of any other activities? Come on, participate. <laughs> uh, come on, let's rob this little store. <laughs> It'll be Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> That's a good activity. <laughs> it's terrible. Come on, let's 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 have this little drug. Come on. Yes. That's a terrible activity. But you can have it. You can do it. Oh. Colossians 3.17 Colossians 3.17 And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Giving thanks to God. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes we use the scriptures in 
and our salvation just like um, water baptism, receiving the Holy Ghost. That's word and deed. We do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't do baptisms in Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible says, whatever you do, in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Another one here is keep a Christian testimony. Keep a Christian testimony. Whatever you have experienced from God, it's good. It's your testimony. If others knew all your escapades on your dates, could you win them to the Lord? <laughs> Sometimes, what you do outside, your, your terrible deeds, just, you know, <laughs> keep it to yourself. Don't publish it. Oh, you know, I've been you know, doing this. Oh, man. <laughs> Don't be so, uh, you know, so happy with what your dates, escapades on your dates. Because the people that you're witnessing to will say, wow, can't be with this guy. Paul gives voice to the dire need to be a living testimony and win souls to Jesus Christ in 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 22. 1 Corinthians 9. Well, can somebody read it for me, for us? 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 22. <laughs> For though Good. I be free from all men, yet I have made myself servant unto all, that I might gain more. Mm -hmm. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. Mm -hmm. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. Hmm. The weak become as I weak, that I might gain the weak. I made all things to all men, that I might be all men save some. Hmm. So Paul was trying to tell us that to be able to win souls we are going to demonstrate that Christian living to them. When we are born again we've been set free. Our freedom is absolute. No. But Paul said in other scriptures that any um, Activities that will bring us into certain activity, uh, captivity or, or addiction, we won't go to that because it will empower us. So, when we have that freedom, we go to the unbelievers and tell them about the ways that God has brought us into and, and the salvation. To the, to the Greeks, the one that doesn't believe the law, as Paul said, as the one that will also be, you know, um, be with with um, their mind, not to do what they're doing, but you know, something like when you are in Rome, do what the Romans do, something like that. Do not be something so sophisticated because you are born again believer. You <laughs> no, don't be a bigot or a, a, a what the other what's the other term. Um, come on. <laughs> uh, bigot, bigot, bigot. Oh, forgot the other term. What? Proud. Proud? Hypocrite? Uh, 
arrogant, the one that condemns, if you are Jew, you con you are condemning the Gentile or heathen. That's a that's bigotry. Yeah. We, we cannot condemn sinners because we are saints. No. We will let them know about salvation, you know. He said, to the weak, I become weak. You know? That's what Paul is saying. I don't manifest my strength to those people that are not in the church. You know, be friend with them and let them sh show them compassion. Yeah. Bring them to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you, you your, your bigotry and your arrogance, say, man, prejudice, that's another term. So, to the weak, he said, and the uh, one thing and in discernment, they don't have any kind of discernment. I have become weak. One thing in discernment, that I might win the weak and over, and over scrupulous. I have, in short, become all things to all men, that I might by all means, at all costs, in any, every way, save some, winning them to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the, that's the attitude. Winning souls to be a living testimony. Don't be proud of your of your things that you have done outside before you are born again. Because you cannot save them by telling them. But maybe you will tell them about, about the, the miracles that the Lord Jesus Christ have done in your life. That's what you're going to tell them. Maybe you can just say, I'm a drunkard before. But now, I'm drunk in the Holy Ghost. I've been an addict before, but now I'm addict going to church. But you not, do not no, no, expound, yeah, man, it's really good. Man, I tried that. Oh. No, do not. Just keep it to yourself. Another one, respect God's property. You must realize that your date is God's property. And that he has the right to do with his property what he wants. If this relationship doesn't progress, thank God for his purpose in this temporary relationship. So respect God's property. Don't ruin it. Don't do anything that will tarnish or make it um, unchaste or unpure. Respect God's property. We're talking about dating uh, standards. But I could also add respect God's property here in the church. <laughs> Don't just play around instruments, you know. They've been dedicated to God <laughs> and play around with it. They're God's property. <laughs> but the main point here is about your partner, your dating partner. Remember, we are talking about dating principles. Respect God's property. See, uh, Saint Luke chapter nine. Saint Luke chapter nine, verse twenty-three to twenty-four. Somebody is going to read it. Brother Body. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. For whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Mm -hmm. 23 to 24. Okay. So if, if you are going to come before the Lord Jesus Christ, you are going to Come and realize that you have to um, die to yourself as, a live, as an example of sacrifice. And um, he said, for whoever would preserve his life, save it, will lose and destroy it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, 
He will preserve and save it from the penalty of eternal death. So, remember that body, that person, is God's property. And you are God property, God's property as well. So we have respect each other. Because that's the property that God had saved and died for. You cannot own that property unless you get married. Once you get married, then your wife is your own. Husband is wife's wife's property. Wife is husband's property. You cannot say to a husband, no, I'm not going to be with you in bed because, you know, <laughs> you're God's property. <laughs> your husband's property. Provided it should be according to the Word of God. Okay, we'll talk about that more as we go along. The next one is, honor the temple of God. As a young person who have a special duty to be careful about misusing bodily passions. So you should be very careful about misusing your bodily passions. We have, we are still living in this body with carnal minds and passions. So be sure to use it properly. And not misuse it. Your bodies are the temple, the habitation of the Holy Ghost. So you cannot just overindulge with your physical passions. And um, not giving God the glory because your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are not your own, as recorded in 1 Corinthians 6 19 to 20. You are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So you have a great responsibility to keep yourselves clean. In other words, clean. Clean in, in the physical sense and clean in your thoughts, clean in your heart. So clean inward and outwards. That's holiness. Outward and inward cleanliness. Honor the temple of God. Next is develop personal qualities. You should concentrate on developing the qualities God wants to be a natural part of your life. So God wants to be a natural part, part of your life. Concentrate on developing that. Because you become one when you are born again Christian with the Lord Jesus Christ. You have that relationship. Now when you are born again, when you repent of your sins, and you are baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins, you receive the Holy Ghost, and you become one with God. You have that relationship, just like a husband and wife. They will have a closer, intimate relationship when they are married. Become one flesh, one body, one mind. So that's what we call a relationship with God. That's why many people, you know, use some kind of power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They have knowledge and understanding about all these things, but they deny the power thereof. The power of the Holy Ghost that lives in them, relationship with God. So they could have all these miracles and wonders in their lives, but Jesus Christ will tell them on the last day, I don't know you. You don't have any relationship with me. Yes, you use my name, and you have faith in my name. But you stop there, you should have gone another step. They knew better that they should continue seeking after God. But because of the miracles, wonders they have experienced, they stop. And so God said, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Talking about relationship. How come the Lord Jesus Christ can tell them, I don't know you? The word, as I've said, uh, yes, I think I've explained it. The word new. It's just not like, uh, I, I know body. That's, that's not how 
deep the word new means. When Adam knew Eve, he got sons and daughters. When Abraham knew Sarah, we have Isaac. When Hannah knew, uh, when Elkanah knew Hannah, we have Samuel. The word knew there is a, is a word between husbands and wife. So when God said, I never knew you, no relationship, they are not one. So they don't understand. When these qualities are evident, God can easily introduce His choice to you. So when you develop the qualities that God wants to be a natural part of your life, that praying is just natural because you cannot live a day without praying. Just like you don't, if you don't eat, you'll get weak. It becomes, it becomes a natural lifestyle. No? Just like you know, when you are in the world, you cannot get out of your house without... <laughs> no, you cannot get out of your house because it seems that you're naked. <laughs> it becomes a natural part. No? So, when we become Christians, see to it that the Lord Jesus Christ is become part of your natural life. You are one with Him. The Spirit of God or Jesus Himself lives in your heart. So you're one with Him. It becomes a natural. You know? What would Jesus do? So that's what you're going to do. If you are in a situation, you, you don't know what to do, then you ask a question, what would Jesus do if he's in this situation? So when these qualities are evident, God can easily introduce his choice to you. So now, your mind, God's mind is one. Paul can say that. We have the mind of Christ. Psalms 34, 37, 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. So your choices... Your desires automatically is approved by God. The next one, wait for God's choice. You should be willing to remain unmarried as long as the Lord desires. Woo! <laughs> wow! Because God will choose someone for you. God wouldn't say an audible voice, she's the one. <laughs> God wouldn't say that to you. <laughs> you should build your relationship with God. And because his spirit and her spirit are the same, then, you know, Meeting of minds, meeting of goals, meeting of objectives, your dreams and her dreams, you know. So what, what's keeping you? That's God's choice for you. Do not wait for an audible voice. <laughs> you have to do it yourself with God's help. You are in the kingdom of God. You're building up a relationship with God. If, if that person doesn't build his or her relationship with God together with you, she's not for you. Yeah. The principles of God, the words of God, the spirit of God, discernment works for you. So that, that's God's choice for you. Luke 22, 42. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. I know that the Lord Jesus Christ said these things, that the will of God, the Spirit, 
is the one that Jesus said, let your will be done, not my will. In other words, the will of God for you to have a partner, then so be it. Don't will it yourself. I'm going to get her by crook, by hook or by crook. And take a look, there are a lot of young people that you have known from previous churches. You know them because they've been together with you. They tried to, you know, look and go after that man. You know, I'm going to get her. Get him. Of course they get married. But where are they now? Where are they now? Next, obtain parents' consent. You should not get married without the full consent of both sets of your parents. Mm. Let's take a look and read Ephesians 6, 1 to 3. Dios. Ephesians 6, 1 to 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment of the promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. That's right. Is that your memory verse? <laughs> <laughs> It's good to be a memory verse for young people. <laughs> if both sets of parents do not give full approval of your partner or permission for marriage, it may be because certain immature attitudes have been detected. If both parents are in the will of God, are faithful in God, now they have discernment and they could know from other sources about this girl or this boy and oh, if they could set a time that they could sit together and say, uh, you know, I heard about you doing this, you're, you're fun of gambling. <laughs> this is an example. So you should say, no, I've heard it. Is it true? Ah, yeah. I'd love to go to Gold Luto and, uh, you know, if I could win a million, that'd be good. <laughs> but, you know, you should correct it and make it, you know, don't do that because I won't agree with your marriage life if you do that until you're married. Stop it. Because it's not good for a, a Christian to gamble. No? We're not living by chance. God directs our ways. So, then you can correct it and then the parents will say, okay. But you know, until then, parents will say, don't agree with that, with that man. No? He, he, he'd like his body to be tattooed. I don't like him. So, so some agreement and disagreement. But it would be good that if both parents will agree. That's why it, 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 it's better and it's best for you know, a boy and a girl being in the church and the parents being in the church. They could meet each other, they could talk, and you know, agreement, and, and then later on when they got married, yes. Huh? I know you're not perfect, but you'll be a good husband for my daughter. I know you're not perfect, but you'll be a good you know, wife and mother of my son and you know, my son's children. So, this should be a, a, a parent's consent. When these weak areas are improved, that's why I said, you know, agreement, disagreement, you should talk it over. Approval may then be given. After you have rearranged things, oh, you should, you know, not cut your hair, you young girl. I, 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 you know, I heard that you're cutting your hair. I, I haven't seen your hair long for a year. It's just the same land. <laughs> so I think it's not good for a wife to be. So don't cut your hair, okay? So, okay. So after one year you could see, whoa, 
<laughs> Approval for marriage. But as long as you do it. No? If she doesn't do it and she still cuts her hair, then you tell your son, ah, it's not good for me. No? I don't approve her for your wife. <laughs> Terrible. Marriage is in, re in reality a uniting of two families. That's what it is. Extended families. Uniting of two families. <laughs> but a lot in the church. <laughs> that there's no unity on in-laws. Because we have not been brought up with the principles. The importance of establishing respect for parents' opinion and advice cannot be overemphasized. Last one. Be financially stable. Young man, you should be of financial stability so that you will be able to assume the responsibility of supporting your future wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I married Sister Marge, I'm already working. I can support her. Although she's still uh, going to uni. You know, and both my parents and Sister Marge's parents doesn't agree, but, well, <laughs> that's before. <laughs> it's supposed to be agree, but we are pretty stubborn. <laughs> we don't know the Bible. Okay, let's get married. <laughs> I thank God we are born again. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Hallelujah. So, young man, at least you have a job. Uh, and you can buy food and rent. And, uh, you know, you can live a, a, a comfortable you know, life. Not struggling. You go to a brother and sister, can I borrow a hundred bucks? Oh, I don't have anything. Oh, man. <laughs> That's, that's not good. Be able to assume responsibility. 1 Timothy 5.8 But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel. You are worse than an unbeliever. You should provide for your own house. The need. Oh, when you marry, you don't have to have a, you know, a luxury mansion and, and a luxury car. No, you don't have to have that. You don't have to go to Jerusalem, you know, after you're married. No, it's all right. <laughs> but you could have a, a little comfortable life. You could rent a, a room. You know. But it's fine, just a... Um, Thing that could support your wife for some time, then you develop your work and she can work, and then you could rent a house and buy a good car. And you could have a holiday, you know, could go to conferences. This also gives your girlfriend confidence in God's ability to provide for her through you as her future husband. So there is a trust there, there's confidence between a boy and a girl. So she, she trusted you because you believe in God. Oh, you believe in God and your goal is that, you know, you are going to have a good married life. And of course, if you trust God and you're doing the right thing for God, God's going to provide things. He will not, you know, just leave you on your own. Not unless God is trying you. But, you know, God is going to provide. Philippians 4.19, but, uh, but my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He's going to supply your need. Not your wants. He's 
you're going to supply your need. Submission to earthly authority. A further characteristics that concern the Christians, concerned Christians should look for in a person they choose to date is his harmony with the authority or earthly authorities God has placed over him. Proper submission to spiritual leadership, secular authorities and parents is an absolute must in choosing a dating partner. So you are going to submit to earthly authorities. So earthly authorities doesn't only um, connotes civil authorities, but also church authorities, because the church is still on earth. So you submit to spiritual leadership and secular authorities, just like you know, policemen and and the uh, people that are given the um, jurisdiction over us by set of laws given to us on earth. Proper communication and harmony between a girl and her father is a foundation for the same harmonious submission to her husband. So if the girl respects and submits to his, her father, it's a good sign that she submits to authority. Because her husband will be now over her when they get married. So it's a sign for the good girl that she submits to her father. If that girl doesn't submit to her father and she abuses her father every time they come together, it's not good. If the girl doesn't, you know, obey the authority of the uh, rules and regulations in driving, you just speed up. Oh, man. Huh? Then it's not good. In other words, the, the way a girl treats her father will most likely be the way she treats her future husband. A girl should seek friendship with a man who has learned proper respect and obedience to his parents. So a man that obeys his parents no, it's a good one. The way he responds to his father will, will display his understanding and appreciation of authority. The way he treats his mother will probably be the way he, ad, he administers his authority over his future wife. So, those are the Bible standards for dating. If you could grasp it, Young people, parents, of course, you teach your children. I, you know, I could not teach any more my kids. They, have, they are married already. But they can teach the children. So the next lesson is principles of Christian dating part two. <laughs> you just finished part one. So it's about moral impurity. It's about dangers, uh, forbidden fruit, dangers in petting, petting. It's more on a little bit deeper. So that's what we're gonna discuss next week. Wow. So boys and girls, <laughs> I wish all the young people can be here. <laughs> this is good for them. And of course, it's good, for, it's good for parents. Because they can emphasize this when every time their the children, you know, overstep the boundary. Eh, remember our lesson? Remember the Bible? Shall we stand tonight? <laughs>